Tomorrow, go and buy Jota. Bring it. Instead of clapping, write what you were going to clap. Because especially Pentecostals, when they don't want to hear what you are saying or to remember, they clap it away. That's how we knew that my friend was not in university. My friend was in every department. You see him with T-square. He's going to environmental sciences. So you think he's in architecture. Then we'll see him in economics, coming out with pencil in his head. He didn't cut his hair. This guy was in campus for eight years. It was when I was graduating that I was telling some of my friends who were in architecture, like four-year course, five-year course, I was telling them that, ah, my friend, I don't really understand, though, because he wrote exam with us in political science. He wrote an exam with us in political science. But I saw him coming out of a building. And he was talking with them about cantilever and reinforced concrete. You know that, that reinforced concrete, that question. <laughs> so they told me, they say, ha. Ah. <laughs> Tony was here before we came to ABU. We came out. <laughs> before we came to ABU, he was a student. He's in every department. When they are doing public lecture, Balaus man is there in front. He will be asking questions. So excuse me, sir, that academic robotism that you mentioned, can you further elucidate on it? Then you hear the student, oh boy, elucidate. You don't know anything. I'm telling you. I hope some of you from Afit are students too. If not, I will stay outside and look at your ID card. It's a school. Marriage is what? A school. You never stop studying. The day you stop studying, you will tell her, I am tired. Why won't you be tired? You are reading the wrong course. The woman I married, when I married her, she wasn't eating anything. Yogurt and biscuits, she will be okay. Now, because she married a gluten, I didn't tell you who she married. Now she cooks. She cooks pounded yam, cooks all kinds of things, and eats more than before. So now, can I still go to the market and buy her yogurt and biscuit and say, that's what you eat today. Oh. That's what I married you eating. You stop there. Will I sleep well? I have to study her and, okay, you have changed. Would you like yakemi pounded yam? It's not a controversy now. In the night when I'm returning, I'm bringing you suya. Because your habits have changed. People grow. You don't sit with the old person you married and you don't move forward. Then me, she met me eating pounded yam, rice, everything. Now the doctor said no. So now today she asked me, will you eat uh, couscous? Before, if you ask me couscous, I'll just be looking at you and laughing. <laughs> because how do you eat couscous? Then when you are tired, you just drop the spoon. It's couscous. Is that food? How can you ask me oh, that I will chop couscous? Are you not looking for a problem? It's exercise. It's exercise. <laughs> Even rice, papa is what? Exercise. Irresi. Then you just tell me couscous. If for breakfast, if you mention couscous, then it should be amongst two, two, the moment two, you know, you know, warmed to and other things. You understand what I'm saying? You boys, you now get me now. Yeah. I get my feelings. How many of you now get my feelings? <laughs> I go wake up for money. Somebody asked me that I go chop sandwich. I say, eh? What's that? I told you, my sister now, Maxine said, would you, would you, uh, uh, Pastor Chris? I said, yeah. W would, you, would you like some bread? I said, yeah, yeah, Max. She said, um, would you like a toast? I said, yeah, yeah. Light or heavy toast? I said, yeah. I didn't answer. I said, yeah. Then she said, one or two slices. I said, yeah, yeah. Because I didn't know what she meant. Then she brought two slices of bread. It's one slice, so she cut it in the, uh, 
At an, uh, diagonally, a beauty she called okay. So the thing looked like two triangles. That's what she called two. So I sat down and said, yeah. She said, would you like some bacon? I said, yeah, yeah. She said, one or two. I said, yeah. I didn't say one. I didn't say two. I said, yeah. Then she said, do you, would you like some baked beans? I said, yeah. Then she poured 36 beans. I, I counted them. Because when there is no work, you start counting beans. How do you give me 36 beans? I did like this with my eye. I don't already count them. I did count them five, five. Five by five by five. She likes some bacon. I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say one or two. I say, <laughs> that I didn't say yeah. Because <laughs> if she saw my eyes, I was crying. Then her husband now came out. George! And he said, yeah, honey. He said, Pastor Chris is having a large breakfast. He said, oh, ooh, this is really large. <laughs> at that time, I was looking at both of them. <laughs> clenching my teeth. Then they said, will I have tea? I said, yeah, yeah. Then they brought that British cup, tea cup. Then they poured the tea. Know that one when you do three times. Then we ate. When we finished. At least they say we are finished. Then they left and went up to get ready. I saw where they put the bread. It's a chrome silver box. The bread has a house in the kitchen. Me, I am homeless. So I went and I freed the bread from bondage. I was singing this song. Freedom is coming tomorrow. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Then I broke the bread in two. You know those bread now? I, I packed like eight slices at once. Then I squeezed them. They became like baton. <laughs> eh? Yeah, that's all. It's a handle. I handled the bread. Then I started playing basketball. Me and Kobe Bryant. Dunking. Two, three bites, eight slices were gone. Until I saw the last slice. You know that last slice that is like, like razor blade? So I wrapped that one inside leather and I put him in the house and I went upstairs. Then I heard the husband saying, Honey, I'm going to have my breakfast now and I wait for you. Then when he got down, I heard, Honey, Honey, honey. Then she said, yes, honey. Where's the bread? She said, it's in the bread box. Is that the box is empty. Then I said, Lebada Shuto Krabba. Rafa Takadaba Kata Katayaga. Lokeka Kumada Kuseka. Andaga Managa Dukuba Nuka Dika Das. I heard the wife telling him, I left it there, I'm coming. And she ran down, Pastor Chris, don't come down, I have only my towel. And she went down and said, where's the bread? And the two of them said, Munga, munga, kikam, dunga, mm, in, mm. And they said, you should ask me. Then she said, he's praying. <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's warfare. When I came down, I saw the two of them sitting in the parlor like chickens that rain dealt with. I said to them, you are the people causing unemployment on the earth. Every day, bakeries are producing bread. You are eating it one slice per day. Is that not wickedness? Ah. Then she said, she never saw it like that. As a foolish girl. 
Nonsense. We don't eat bread like that. We were in hospital with my mother-in-law, my wife's mother. And then they came and asked us, Mrs. Sabu, what would you have for dinner? And um, uh, egg, what do they call it? Hard-boiled egg. And she said, yes, yes. So they brought the egg. They brought it on a cup, special cup. Then they put the egg on top of the cup. Then they gave her a tiny knife and fork. And she was saying, Tah, Chris, what will I do? I said, let's study the way they are eating. Then we eat. Then she said, okay. Then you know the old women, they will break the egg with that little spoon and then be peeling the shell with fork. Then they will be taking little egg, tiny, like groundnut. Mm, it's nice, Mrs. Tabu, it's nice. Then Mama said, Chris, kagaya musuza mutuana. Now I should tell them that she would die here of hunger. That, that I should tell them, that, that's how they put one potato. Potato. And they told her that it's jacket potato. So she said, jacket? The woman said, yes. The woman said, wearing jacket? And the woman laughed. Like you see it. You know what they meant by jacket potato? That the potato is in his skin. And then they were peeling the skin with this small, small fork. And taking small potato. Mama said, Chris, Kagaya Mosu, Dankali Guda Ham Sendi Kesa Tukunya. That she puts 50 potatoes in one pot to cook. That these people are stingy. So I said to her, I said, Mama, I'm coming. We saw a bakery as we were approaching the hospital. So I went there, chattered loaves of bread, meat pie, chicken pie. I filled leather bag and I came and kept it. She said, thank you, my son. <laughs> That's how we were to survive in that hospital. If not, we'll die of a new disease. <laughs> new disease that has no cure. It's just take us to a restaurant. That's all. And they call the food one kind of something, moussaka of something, something, something. So mama said, what's the meaning? I said, mama, well, I have never seen the name of this thing in all my life. We call spiritual warfare. God has already told you. He will harden Pharaoh's heart. So that Pharaoh will let you go. With a strong and an outstretched arm. Because I will smash yes. Pharaoh. And he will let you go. He has already told you. Then you now come and turn the warfare into reality. So much so that you have lost your peace. Lost your strength. Lost your courage. Lost zeal. Lost everything. Something will be drama. They have already told you. When people pass by your window, what they hear more is Satan, not Jesus. And they hear your sorrow, your anguish, more than your joy, thanksgiving and strength. What? What did Jesus mean when he said it is finished? I'll take out pages tomorrow morning and, 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 and evening. I'll take out pages from Moses' engagements. With Pharaoh. So that you can come and decide what part of warfare was left for you. 